Hello, Tom. Hi. Could you briefly introduce yourself and explain shortly TerraCycle's business activities? Sure. So uh, I'm Tom. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of TerraCycle. Uh, TerraCycle now operates in 26 countries around the world, and our goal is to make things that are non-recyclable recyclable. Our motto is to eliminate the idea of waste, and we think that's the way to accomplish it. So what we do in countries, even here in Germany, is we partner with major brands in Germany, companies like Colgate or BIC or many others. Uh, and are able to launch national free recycling programs for things that you couldn't recycle before, like pens and toothbrushes. People just go to our website, collect the garbage, download a DHL shipping label for free, send it to our warehouse, we collect it, process it. And we're looking at many different ways to uh, create these models as well, funding from cities or funding from individuals, basically with a mission on how do you rethink the idea of garbage. How were your first impression of sensibility? I thought it was really cool. I'm so glad that there is a conference, you know, looking at sustainability crossed with business. Hopefully it inspires a lot of people who are here today to think about careers in social business, not just going to be a lawyer or a banker, but looking at how they can create meaningful impact and still make money for themselves. So I think many times people think that you have to choose one or the other. Choose big money or choose, you know, uh, doing good things for the world. And that today that choice doesn't have to be made. You can do both. And, the night, and that's where social business, I think, comes in. Recently, the issue of a new legal form in the US came up. Yes. The so-called Benefit Corporation. Hmm. Have you ever thought about changing from an incorporation to this kind of social uh, model for social businesses form? Well, so I'm very close friends with the people at B Labs and B Corp. But so I want to clarify something. B Corp is not a form of incorporation. B Corp is a form of certification. So we're a C-Corp in, in the US, it's just a form of company. That is an incorporation type. So is being a nonprofit. That is an incorporation type. We wouldn't have to change being a C-Corp. We would become a B-Corp and that is more like a certification. It's more like saying you're organic or you're fair trade. So I just want to clarify because many people think B-Corp is a new form of company. It is not. It's a form of certification. Now, um, we're really close with the guys there. I think what they're doing is amazing. And I really think you know, more and more companies should look to be certified B Corp. Uh, we chose not to only because of our global structure right now. We have, uh, I mean, we're 26 countries and there's 50 incorporations to manage. And it wouldn't have worked within the structure we had. But we still work like we would be a B Corp. There's no difference. It's just we couldn't technically do it. There was a weird technical challenge. Ah. In your opinion, hmm. How do social entrepreneurs distinguish themselves from other entrepreneurs apart from their business model? I think it's one simple thing. If you ask an entrepreneur, a normal entrepreneur, what's the purpose of business? Most likely the answer you'll get back is it's to make money for shareholders. That's what you learn in you know, an MBA class. I mean, that is the purpose of a, of a company. I think if you asked a social entrepreneur, they would say, well, the purpose of my business is to do good for the environment and or do good for society while making profit. So in, in other words, profit doesn't become the purpose. It just becomes an indicator of health. I sort of view profit as how much fat we have on our bodies. You know? If you are unprofitable, you're going to starve and die, right? and you go bankrupt. But after you have enough, do you really need more? Once you're, you know, then you just get too much, right? And I think you can only really be wildly profitable if either you charge too much for whatever you do, or you don't make it good well enough. Either you have to reduce your cost or you have to charge more, right? So I think with social business, it's all about looking at the purpose being society or the environment and profit being an indicator of health. And it's the question of profit is the real difference between social business and normal business. What have been the trickiest barriers for TerraCycle in order to collaborate with the real big market players? The biggest challenge right now, I think, uh, not just for TerraCycle, but for any sustainable business whatsoever, is imagine it as like a circle, which is what is the right thing to do for the planet or the environment, or sorry, for the planet or people. Then you have another circle, which is what makes money. The only thing right now that big corporations are focused on is where the two come together. So they're focused on CSR or sustainable activities or, or, or funding these things if it makes money. And that is a key challenge because that out, uh, uh, rules out many things that are the right thing to do but may not easily make money. And so we've had to work very hard to make sure we fit into that overlap and demonstrate that by funding a waste solution you can generate money. But I wish I didn't have to prove it generated money. How can social economy further be supported and where can incentives be set? 
I think the best way to support social economy is exactly what you're doing here, which is to create as much awareness around the idea of social business as possible. Make sure young people know that there's many alternatives and that there's a really good way to, uh, that, social, that social business can be very powerful, can be very exciting, can make you money. That it's not just, you know, opening up an organic soap stand and selling it in a local farmer's market, which is what many people sort of perceive it to be. And then they, they don't feel like it's sexy. So I think making it sexy, making it exciting is what will have more people open their eyes. And that's what we need right now. Is the change of hearts, which is required for more sensitivity towards society problems already accomplished? It's, it's slowly getting there, I think. For example, um, you know, America 10 years ago, 20 years ago, was the heartland of consumerism, right? Everyone bought more than they ever needed. I see that changing now. People our age uh, in the United States are looking at buying less uh, as being more cool. And I think that is critical, but it's not fast enough. We need more and more of that uh, perspective change to occur. We need what, uh, you know, we need to aspire not to having three cars, five houses and a private plane. That is, if everyone wants that, we're not gonna, it's not gonna work. As, Ty as TerraCycle is one of the most international social enterprises, what was your strategy for international, internationalization? So TerraCycle, you know, we're in 26 countries. We're really a micro multinational. Uh, and uh, you're right. I think we're one of the only multinational social businesses uh, out there. There's a few, but, nothing, but, but not that many. The way we did it is we leveraged our partners. If we worked with a company in country A, then we always ask them, what other countries would you like us to expand in? The reason we're opening in Japan in two months is because one of our partners in America said, we want now you'd, uh, uh, that's, that we want this service that you bring at TerraCycle to be available in Japan. And it's leveraging these large global partners made international expansion uh, much easier than it may feel or you know, people may think. Have you ever thought about going public, for example, at the Social Stock Exchange in London? Um, it's something to consider. I like our path right now is to stay private uh, and to do partnerships with major waste management companies. Uh, so we sold recently 25% of our business to one of the largest uh, uh, waste management companies here in Germany. We did the same in Canada, the same in Brazil. I want to do more of that and then maybe public in five, ten years, but uh, it's not something that we're thinking about today. That's a link to my ultimate question. Yeah. Where I'd like to, to ask you um, for your, about your vision for TerraCycle. Where do you see the company in seven years? Well, I, you know, right now, this year, last year we did about 20 million in sales. This year, I think we can do about 25. Uh, in seven years, maybe 100, 200 million in sales would be our goal. But that's sort of the classic business way to answer the goal. What I really want is I want TerraCycle to be in as many countries as possible, solving as many different uh, types of garbage that today have no solution. That's just hard to put into a money uh, figure. Thanks for your interview, Tom. Thank you as well.